Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I have spoken to a national conference of Turning Point a couple of years ago, and uh, so I'm familiar with what Turning Point does in terms of bringing innovation and helping uh, folks work together for public health. And I speak a lot to public health organizations, uh, which is a field that I think is very, very important. Um, I also, uh, I happened to get here yesterday afternoon, sat down, turned on the television, and when Oprah was done, it was the news. And uh, there was that national report on childhood obesity, and then a nice clip on the uh, Oklahoma Fit Kids Coalition, right? Which is, some of you, I suppose, overlap, and then they're meeting in a room next door, so it was like, that was pretty cool. I mean, I get here, and within minutes, I'm learning about the folks, the work that, that you're doing, so you're getting your message out there somewhat. Let me say what I think the problem is that we've got. You and everyone else that I work with, um, nonprofits, foundations, public agencies, um, they have great stories. You have great stories, stories of people and of courage and challenge and change. But very often, you are so in love with data, with the, with the numbers, with the graphs, with the cost-benefit analysis, um, that you don't trust the stories you have and you either don't tell them, or you tell the wrong ones, or you tell them badly. And that's a real problem, because stories are the most powerful communications tool we have. And let me just show you as an example how um, a public service group, one of you, for instance, might tell one of our culture's most beloved stories. An at-risk youth from a blended family in the farm belt suffers severe head trauma from extreme weather event undertakes high-risk journey to distant mineral-based urban center, accompanied by three variously challenged homeless adults, pursued by a malevolent person of color, as well as airborne primates, struggles with opium addiction, and wakes up in her own bed to realize that it was all a dream, but she has a newfound appreciation of family and community. And the story is, the Wizard of Oz. And the person of color? The Wicked Witch. OK, now it might not be that bad, but you get the idea. Very often, um, if you miss on story, story is what engages people. I also do workshops, three hours, sometimes more, where people not only learn what you're going to learn, but they also write stories, and then I coach them on rewriting them and so on. And my shortest direction is open with story, close with data. And by that I mean, if you think of it as sales, what I mean by close with data and open with story is get people engaged. Tell that compelling human story about how someone's diet changed, or their lifestyle changed, or they got more freedom in their life, or ch uh, child abuse was, was halted or prevented. And it, you get that human impact, you make that connection, and then you close with that great statistic. You know, how treatment is so much more cost effective than prison. Or how, you know, this amount of lifestyle change can increase, uh, can decrease obesity and increase health. And so you finish and you close your case with that data. Um, let me just show you um, some work that we did with a very worthy organization in Portland, Oregon, Friends of the Children. Anybody know Friends of the Children? It's really quite an amazing program. They meet with at-risk youth in preschool, and they choose a number of them <laughs> who then will be matched with a friend who is a paid professional who will spend four hours a week, 52 weeks a year, for, and through 12th grade. Quite an amazing program. So how did they tell people about themselves? Like this. Right? It gets better. You can just see um, funders are reaching in their pockets for their checkbooks. The media is thinking up headlines. And of course, they're all important theory of change slide. I'll let you read that. No, that would be cruel and unusual. OK. So fabulous program. This is how they used to introduce themselves. They worked with my colleague Andy Goodman, and this is what they do now. They introduce you to TR. TR came into the program when he was 10 years old. 
That year, he was suspended from school 22 times. At home, he lived with a single mom in a neighborhood of poverty, drugs, and gangs. Okay? They matched him with Zach Harris. And Zach and he began to meet for those four hours a week, and they formed a bond, and they were doing very well. But what Zach realized after a time was that he only had him for four hours a week. The gang had him every afternoon. And that if he was really going to make an effect, he was going to have to deal with that. So I'm going to read Zach's own words. One day, one that he says he'll never forget, he played a, a visit to the gang leader and the gang who controlled that neighborhood. And he says, I recall going to the gang members one day. I'll never forget the lump I felt in my belly. This one gentleman had to be about 6'2". He looks me right in the face and says, may I help you? And I said, little TR right there, he's mine now. He's going to be okay. And I'd appreciate it if every day when he came home, you didn't let him stay out with the guys, but you sent him back into the house. And that's what they did. Because they also saw that this was a kid who had a chance. So what happens? In high school, TR makes good grades, becomes a star in football, and wins a football scholarship to a Division I college, the University of Oregon, and this is a recent Friends of the Children newsletter. And that's how they start their presentations now. You can feel the difference, I'm sure. So, my goal in the next 45 minutes is to convert you to persuade you, to win you over, to have you under my spell that human compelling stories are the most powerful communications tool you have. 